Hi there, I'm Simon Crompton from PermanentStyle.com and today I'm here with Alex Savetkovic from the podcast Handcut Radio. And today in this video we're going to talk about some questions that uh, readers have put recently on the website. Uh, Alex has been looking at a few and we're going to talk about one question in each video and then try and take it from every angle we can think of. So Alex, what's our question today? All right, uh, our next question uh, for you, Simon, is I am visiting a tailor or a shirt maker for the first time. Yeah. I'm nervous and I have a list of things to remember. Yeah. What do you think should be on that list? Ah, great question, okay. Mm. Yeah, I think, a, I think a lot of readers get very nervous about doing this kind of thing I'm doing bespoke for the first time. Yeah. Um, and I have seen people with those lists and it can go to multiple sides of information <laughs> as to all the things they should ask and all the things they have to say. I mean, I still do it. I've, I've, <laughs> really? been, I've been dabbling in this field for about six years and yeah. I still get paranoid. And you've, um, uh, what's the, when you're making that list, what, are you afraid you're going to forget something or you're going to say the wrong thing? Or what do you think is the, the, the fear? I don't know what it is. I think it's that, it's that conscious, it's that part of your brain that knows you're about to spend an inordinate amount of money on something, that yeah. once it's been cut, it's been cut. Yeah. Um, but that, that actually, the, the, the main contribution that I can make to this question yeah. is, please just let the craftsman do his or her thing. Yeah. I have spent yeah. so many years learning that the hard way and so many clothes have never lived a life because I fought the craftsmen on what they naturally what know they to, how do. to do. Yeah, I think that's a really good point and I think that's probably the most important one in this, in this area is just make sure you understand what they can do, whether you like it or not, what tweaks you might make to it, but just small things and then go off that basis. Yeah. You know? And it's, it's something I've said a lot, but like, Tailors and shirt makers often make this mistake. They just have nothing on display you can even see and try. Hundred percent. You don't know what they're going to get, get, which is just ridiculous. Yeah. You know, you need to have things you can see. If you're a first-time bespoke customer, you're used to physical retail where you go into a shop, you see something, you try it on, you see whether you like it or not. Suddenly, you, you've just got a complete blank slate. Yeah. If you had something in between where you had a few things hanging up, you could try things in your size, talk about style. Some examples of even cloths they like that season that you could talk about and reference. It'd be so much easier, wouldn't it? Yeah. Completely. And I think that, that there's an important point in there for me, which is before you go in, regardless of, of what you're thinking of ordering, make sure you have established what the house style is. Yeah. Because if you like the house style yeah. and you then go in there and you, you are determined that you want tic a ticket pocket on the coat and that the flaps must be cut at a 17 degree angle, you know, even if you don't get that, you're probably going to be happy with the result. because. Yeah. Particularly, I think, with a suit or a sports coat or an overcoat, whatever, the, the, the impact of that garment is in that initial impression when you walk yeah. into the room yeah. or you're wandering down the street yeah. or you're wandering to the office in the morning. You, know, it, it, you, you have to learn as the consumer of Bespoke to get past wanting absolutely everything your own way. Yeah, and that's very true. And it's hard, isn't it? Because you're suddenly, you've been told you can have everything. Yeah. And a lot of people, particularly those who want to kind of please you, will want to provide everything, and don't really care quite so much about the final result, will give you lots and lots of options, but actually they kind of, they should know really it's not going to turn out exactly like that. Yeah, and it's about, I, I think it's about a kind of 50-50 process of curation. Mm. Over, over that period of time of walking into your tailor, having different fittings and learning what you like and what you don't like. And, and unfortunately, I think for the vast majority of guys, there will be one or two garments early on in your journey that yeah. end up just being an expensive write-off, yeah. which has happened to me. Yeah. Um, you learn what works in your own personal taste and you learn to listen to the craftsman. Yeah. Um, and the pair of you kind of get to a point where you just reach the right kind of accommodation, but yeah. it takes time. And I think, I think that, yeah, absolutely. And I think it's sometimes readers and, and people are put off by the fact that they walk and they start talking to the craftsman. And they don't really think the craftsman knows that much, or they seem to know more than them about cloth. Yeah. You know, they, they use some terminology and the craftsman doesn't know what they're talking about, or the craftsman hasn't seen all the other tailors and shirt makers and can't kind of compare them all. But actually, the craftsman is not a designer. They're not trying to design something fresh every time you come in. They're, they might tweak some things according to what you want, but they have a way that they cut that is very popular, that's been good for a very long time, that's been refined slowly over the years. 
And that often works very well for that reason, because it's been done that way yeah. for a very long time. So they're not trying to recreate things every time. So don't be kind of put off by that. But they just know things that kind of work, basically. Mm -hmm. And it becomes instinct to that particular tailor or shirt maker or shoemaker or yeah. whatever, right? Yeah. Um, I think that's really interesting. So are you then saying don't take a list in? No, I think, I think yeah, definitely take a list in, if only if it's, only if it's a, a list of things you want to kind of bring up with the tailor, you know, or shirt maker. Um, but be aware of the fact that the, it's, it is a collaborative process. And if you find that you're basically telling the tailor everything they want to do, then I think you should probably go and talk to somebody else because you do want a little bit from their point of view. They are the master. They have been doing it for a very long time. And it's, the question often happens on the website. People say, you know, oh, I really want a, you know, a, a Neapolitan style jacket, but there's no one near me. I have this local tailor who normally cuts something like this, which is the complete opposite style. Mm. Should I try and work with him to make something different? And the answer is no. Yeah. <laughs> but it's really hard to accept that because you're like, like you know, I live in, you know, uh, a small town in the US. I can't get to, like, to New York or to LA to see a proper Neapolitan tailor. I really, really want something. And it's so tempting because they're so really, they like that style. And even the tailor says, oh yeah, I could probably do something like that. It's never going to be the same thing. And, no. the, and your point, you just waste a lot of time and money that way as well, unfortunately. Yeah, yeah. And, and if, you, if, you, if you find that you are, you're going to a tailor and you're fiddling and you're kind of trying to improve a garment by three or 4% each time, yeah. and you're dropping X thousand dollars or pounds to do that, that's just not what bespoke should be. No, absolutely. And I, th I guess, that, and again, one big message I'd say from that is, is play safe, you know, um, which I'm sure you've kind of had experience as well. I mean, I've, I've learned in the incredibly difficult terms to play safe. <laughs> like, I've got the most ridiculous clothes hanging up in my wardrobe at home that just, again, haven't lived a life. Yeah. Um, well, we we're just talking about like this jacket was cut for me eight years ago by Anderson and Shepherd. I think it was the third thing I had made at Anderson Shepherd. The very first thing was a really strong Prince of Wales flannel suit, which is the thing I'd always wanted and lusted over, which is great, it doesn't get worn that much. Mm. Second thing was a, uh, a bright blue, like a royal blue, double-breasted flannel suit. Oh, wonderful, it hardly gets worn. Larry blue. I know. Tricky. This core actually gets worn a lot, but the interesting thing about this, I would say, is it gets worn a lot, but there's still a lot of things that I would do differently had it, if I had it today. Right. You know, I would have the lapels a little bit wider. It's got big, quite square patch pockets, which I don't really like. I should have had normal pockets. So there's, there's lots of tiny things, but actually, I still really love it. Yeah. You know, it comes, so it doesn't have to be absolutely perfect in all those respects. You know, it's so much better still than something would be that ready to wear. You just got off the rack. You know? Yeah, completely. You know, it's still ninety percent better, but that ten percent is just little things I made mistakes on. And you exactly. You have to accept it as as an artisanal product, as a product that has kind of come about through various different ways and means. Yeah. And 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 that's all part of its charm. Yeah. Um. I, the, the 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 last point that I would add, uh, which actually you have touched on, is you've said keep things simple. I would say, please, 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 particularly if you are new to going in and ordering things, yeah. really don't overdo it. Because mm -hmm. I remember the first thing I ever ordered was a 14 ounce Navy Surge three piece suit. And it was inspired, I believe I, I've spent some of my student loan on it. Uh, which was painful in retrospect. <laughs> and I uh, was 19, 20 years old, and I came into London to get it ordered. It was based on a Boardwalk Empire suit, for Boardwalk Empire was on the telly. Okay. And it was five inch peat lapels, one button coat, slant pockets, double breasted waistcoat, 14 inch rise on the trousers, twin forward facing <laughs> pleats, wide legs, turn back cuffs. It had every monstrosity you could possibly choose of it. <laughs> because when you decide that at the beginning, I said, that doesn't sound too bad. Yeah, no. it's quite heavy material, but it's a navy suit. And then it had suit. a black and pink polka dot lining. And okay. everything about, and I used to wear it to formal at university <laughs> yeah. and just look like an absolute idiot. And I even wore it with black and white correspondent shoes that wow. I bought on eBay from Barker. Um, and have you managed to use that over the years or have anything adjusted it, or take off, the, narrow the trousers or anything to make it, it more usable? It ceased to fit me a long time ago, okay. thankfully. <laughs> uh, but it, it's, it's the perfect disaster warning. You know, yeah. don't. D d rain it in, please rain it in, because you will regret it. Yeah. You have to learn 
where to strike the balance in terms of styling on any bespoke commission, I think. Yeah, I feel like you can't almost focus on some things as well. If you're, if you're obsessed with the pleats and the wide leg and the turn up and the, and the peak lapels, all those kind of things, you can't actually focus on the little things that are nice about mm -hmm. bespoke sometimes around the actual fit and the body and so the whole thing. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Whereas if that first thing is just like a navy suit or just a nice navy wool jacket or something, it's really, really simple, you know. I, I mean, it doesn't have to be like a cashmere blazer that'd be super smart, but just something navy that's wool, that's a jacket, you're going to wear lots of other things. Mm -hmm. Keep it nice and simple, and you'll just love all the little bits about it, you know, and you'll have to wear it in lots of different ways. You, know, you can wear it with like a shirt like this, you know, a denim shirt like that, smart, anything you want, you know. Yeah. I know, I should have done <laughs> all those wasted years. <laughs> um, well, I hope that's reassuring for people, though. We've both made lots of mistakes oh, in yeah. that sense. I, I'm understand. still making mistakes today. There we are. I think, uh, actually, one of the things I thought was quite interesting about um, interacting with a craftsman was around talking about cloth. Like, I find that um, readers often want to, they get so nervous about picking the wrong cloth that they want to define it narrower and narrower as to exactly what they want. They're walking, okay, well, what ounce do I want? Mm. You know, I want it to be a hop sack. I want it to be this navy. They want the code and everything else. And I think sometimes they get put off slightly by the fact that um, names of cloths aren't actually always that narrow. You know, a hop sack is a weave. It's not a color or a weight or, you know, anything else. If you have a mesh that's actually a nicer color and looks exactly the same as hop sack, and the tailor says, look, it's just a different weave. It performs exactly the same way. It's the same thing. Then that's fine. Yeah. And you should take a little bit of their word for that because you don't understand all the aspects of how cloth performs. Um, and, you know, a high twist is a type of yarn. It's not kind of anything else. And it, it's so easy to get obsessed with these little details around cloth and not make that interactive yeah. at all. So, so I, guess, I guess what we're really saying at the end of the day is try just try really hard not to overthink things when you walk in you know you, yeah. you need a framework yeah but the, the craftsman provides a lot of that framework yeah personal taste feeds into it but it can get carried away yeah and any successful bespoke garment is is built on a relationship of trust yeah absolutely and in the same way almost you're going into a ready-to-wear shop the great ready-to-wear shops are where you have a salesperson that you actually like and trust yeah right doesn't matter what you're buying if you've been there before you've seen them a few times the last time they sold you something which is really good they now get a sense of what you like and you go in the next time and they say, oh, you'd really like this. If they're a good salesman, it won't just be, this is new into the shop, we should sell this to this person. It's actually, this would go really well with what you bought before, you know, actually trying to understand you. And that's what a good tailor should be doing as well and have that kind of relationship. So yes, have a list, but the risk of having a list is that you kind of walk in and there's nothing interactive. So just be kind of prepared and, and engage with that as well. Brilliant. Yeah. All right. Thanks, right. Simon. No problem at all. Thanks. For more practical information and reviews of artisans, check out permanentstyle.com, the UK's leading website on craft and classic style.